Good afternoon, my friends. This is Paul, and today I'm going to be reviewing to you Kirby and the Forgotten Land for the Nintendo Switch. This is Kirby's first mainline game in 3D, which is kind of bizarre because most franchises got their 3D debut on the Nintendo 64, and in some cases the GameCube. But Kirby's been around since the Game Boy, and it took him this long to jump into the third dimension. There have been some pseudo-attempts, such as Kirby Air Ride and Kirby's Blowout Blast, but those are more of tech demos and spin-offs than a full-fledged Kirby adventure. Now, when most franchises take the jump into 3D, they try to distance themselves from their 2D counterparts as much as possible, with Super Mario 64 changing from a linear gauntlet to the finish line to a lot of big, semi-open levels. Kirby decides to play it a little bit safer. There's a handful of free-roaming levels, but for the most part, these are very linear sandboxes that allow you to walk around a little bit more. It still feels like a Kirby game at heart. You run around and jump, you have a limited hover ability to assist with jumping over the platforms, and Kirby can also inhale various objects and enemies. If it's a standard block or a standard enemy, Kirby can just spit it out again as a projectile. But if he swallows an enemy that has a particular ability, then he can copy that ability. For example, if there's an enemy carrying a sword, then guess what? Kirby gets a sword if he swallows it. The jump to being in 3D has also made it so that some of Kirby's more awkward control mechanisms are no longer required. For example, in the old games, you would have to double tap on the control pad to get Kirby to run. Now he just runs automatically because there's analog control. In addition, you no longer have to press down to get Kirby to swallow the copy ability. If he automatically inhales an enemy with an ability, he will get that ability. And I don't know why it took Kirby this long to figure it out, but better late than never, right? Kirby in the Forgotten Land feels like what Super Mario 3D World would be if I actually liked that game as the camera angles generally do a really good job of making you feel like the depth perception is good and you're able to make the jumps properly. It doesn't try to do too much that's radically different from Kirby's standards, but at the same time, it feels like it took the negative feedback that Star Allies got and managed to improve upon the formula. For instance, that game was criticized for being notoriously easy. Forgotten Land has two difficulty modes, Spring Breeze and Wild Mode. In Wild Mode, the enemies take a little bit longer to defeat, and Kirby will also take more damage. I haven't actually tried Spring Breeze because I really wanted a harder Kirby adventure, but I do think that it's nice that players have that option, and when you're playing on Wild Mode, you also get more coins. Now, unlike most Kirby games where coins don't really do a whole lot, you get a hundred of them and you get an extra life, now that there are no lives system, about time. Instead, Kirby will use the coins to buy items from the Waddle Dee town. At first, the town is all in ruins when you first get it, but as you progress through the levels, you'll find Waddle Dees that are hidden in cages. Some of them are hidden, and some of them are literally the end goal for beating the level, kind of like the flagpoles in Super Mario Bros. And as you keep rescuing them, then they'll offer more and more services in the town, such as being able to stock up on food or to upgrade Kirby's copy abilities. I don't want to spoil too much about what the town does, because I found that not knowing what the upgrades were made it more fun to come back to the town and say, wow, look at this new building. That's a cool new feature. So I won't go in depth, but I will say that a lot of the towns and or a lot of the buildings in the town end up being features in other Kirby games that were just used in different ways. For instance, upgrading the copy abilities already existed in Kirby 64, it's just now it's slightly more convenient. But it is nice that there's a hub world that Kirby can return to to just relax, play a couple of mini games, uh, prepare for tough levels, etc. The world map is also done really nicely as Kirby flies along on his warp star to explore the various levels. This isn't an open world game by any means. The levels are very much self-contained. You don't get to wander around freely. Although, 
it is interesting that this game at least attempts to have really good draw distance. The problem is that when stuff is too far away, even though you can see it, it tends to be both really blurry and really slow. Like, the game just screeches to a halt when something is in the background. Some of the later levels have frame rate issues even when things are in the foreground with a lot of stuff happening. Thankfully, there were maybe only two or three levels where I noticed this, so it shouldn't be too bad. I'm sure the critics will probably notice it more than me, but I'm not much of a frame rate guy. I'm the one that only notices when a dramatic slowdown happens. Overall, I found that Kirby and the Forgotten Land did a great job of finally embracing the third dimension, while at the same time feeling true to the roots of Kirby, sometimes to a fault, as I found that the music was generally pretty good, but at the same time, it still had those overly loud synthetic horns as opposed to getting a full orchestra. To make up for the lack of a full orchestra, this game does have some neat surprises in the audio department that I don't want to spoil. But it is nice that they're at least trying a little bit to evolve, since Kirby's had pretty much the same sound effects and the same jingles for all of these years, and Kirby still says hi to just about everything. In fact, it seems like he says it more, so I wonder if we'll ever get a Kirby game where he speaks in plain English. Although I heard that there's a game called Kirby's Avalanche where he does that, so... Maybe I'll have to give it a try. The graphics are also really nice. They don't look too radically different from those of Star Allies, but maybe because that game was in 2D, I didn't notice as much. But this game has really beautiful landscapes. The apocalyptic setting of the world that Kirby is in lends to a lot more of a destructive, serious vibe to a lot of the level design. And even if it won't blow your mind, it still manages to showcase that the Switch is definitely capable of some jaw-dropping scenes, even if it's a somewhat cartoony realization. I almost forgot to mention that Kirby has a new ability in this game, and that's not only can he copy enemies, but he can copy objects as well. Well, copying is a bit of a loose term, as really it's more of him just stretching his mouth over inanimate objects and being able to possess them Super Mario Odyssey style. These often formulate the most fun ideas that the game has, as you can drive around in a car or turn into a safety cone that allows you to drill holes in various objects. A lot of these concepts are repeated over and over again with more challenging variations, so if you were hoping for the game to constantly throw new ideas at you, you might be slightly disappointed. However, I found that these objects hardly ever wore out their welcome. And a lot of times, the game just kept being more and more fun every time they were introduced, and I usually tried to hold on to them as long as possible. I also found that some of the copy abilities had a couple of new abilities that made them more fun to use in 3D space. There are also these optional treasure road sequences, where Kirby will be able to take the copy abilities and use them in this gauntlet to see if he can master the various abilities that you have. Overall, I found that Kirby and the Forgotten Land was a great first step, while at the same time not feeling like it was trying too hard to distance itself from the 2D platformers that came before. I don't know if I would say it's worth the whole $60. There is a pretty lengthy post-game to give you that additional content that $60 games usually demand. But it also doesn't feel as grand and stepping forward as games like Fire Emblem Three Houses or Super Smash Bros. Ultimate do. So I would say maybe wait for it to go down to $30 or $40, or just rent it like I did. And you should be in for a very fun time. So with that, thank you very much for watching. Let me know down in the comment section if you have any questions or if maybe I left something out. And until the next time, keep the faith, stay epic, God bless, and... I do hope that your mouth doesn't go as wide as Kirby's. I would imagine that would hurt if you tried to swallow a car. Bye!